So, um, start. I guess we'll just start from the beginning. So everybody's done a floor plan, right? And it's at a scale of three eighths of an inch to the foot. Inside dimensions are 28 feet by 28 feet. And what we're going to agree on, so this is just somebody's plan, what we're all agreeing on, what we're all doing, is we're going to cut the picture plane right through these corners. Okay? So an equal amount of the interior is going to be behind the picture plane and in front of the picture plane. Okay? That's one thing. The other thing is that we're going to look in at, look into your space from one of the, of the four corners. So what I'm going to ask you to do, for example, in this one, most of the interesting stuff inside the interior is back at this corner, right? There are probably going to be some foreground objects as well, but I want the staircase located toward the back of the perspective, okay? Because I want to make sure that we get the staircase in. Um, we said that what we're going to do is we're going to set up our perspective so that everything's going to fall inside of a 60 degree cone of vision. So if I use this triangle and I push it up to make sure that I have this corner, this upper corner of the building, and I'm doing my station point line right down the middle of the space, that's going to sort of give me an idea where my station point's going to be, right? Because this is 30 degrees, and if I just flip it, flip it over on the other side, that's 60 degrees, and I've got the entire thing inside, all right? So with a station point established, in terms of distance, we want to make sure is that our station point line is going right through the corner. So basically, this is where our station point line is going to be. The picture plane that I set up is the edge of my sheet, which is just convenient. You don't have to put it on the edge of your sheet. Uh, but that way, I just, I'm just not drawing a line. So this is the actual picture plane of the space. Um, and on that picture plane, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our um, vanishing points. And we set the vanishing points up in plan to begin with. And so what I'm going to do is go for my station point. And since I don't have a really huge 45 degree triangle, and I'm assuming that nobody does, is I'm going to go ahead from the station point. Uh, that's certainly better. Thank you. From the station point, I'm going to go up to my picture plane line in plan. So here's one line from the station point, and I carry that line all the way up until I intersect the picture plane, which is right there. And so that is going to be how I'm going to construct my vanishing point left. I'm going to go back to this side and do exactly the same thing. So that diagonal line, again, take that diagonal line all the way up to the picture plane and plan. And that is going to be what establishes my vanishing point right. Okay. Now, in a two-point, we need measuring points as well, not just um, vanishing points. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure from my station point to the vanishing point where it intersects the picture plane. So I set that on zero here. And I measure down to my station point, And it's exactly 19 inches. So what I'll do now is I'll take that point, I'll pin that point, and I'll swing back up to my picture plane line, again with this on zero. And I'm going to make a, a mark right here at 19. That's going to be my measuring point right. Okay. Now, because we're looking at this right down the middle, that distance from station point to vanishing point should be the same as the distance on this side, right? So really all I have to do is take that same measuring point and swing it back over. So I put 19 on vanishing point right, and I make a mark here, and that's going to be my measuring point left. Okay. So mark those, and mark them on your sheet so that if you don't finish the drawing and you take it up and you're going to reset it, you'll have all those points recorded. Okay. So now I've got vanishing point right, vanishing point left, measuring point right, measuring point left, laid out in plan. Right. Um, so the next step 
is to go ahead and start pulling those points down into a perspective drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a ground line. So I'm going to come down here and just arbitrarily I want to put a line down through here. And that will be the ground line for my picture plane. So that's the baseline for my picture plane. And then I'm going to set a horizon line. And how tall is our space? 20 feet. So we'll just pick uh, the horizon line could be whatever you want. Remember, when you move the horizon line up, you're going to be putting emphasis on what plane? Ground plane. Move it down, you're going to put emphasis on the ceiling plane. So I'm going to go ahead and set my horizon line at, um, I don't know, what? I'll set it at six feet. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me, since I've moved it down, it's going to be, give me an exaggerated view of the ceiling, right? I'm going to see more of the ceiling. And it's up to you where you set that. I don't really care. Okay. So now I'm going to take all those points that I established on my picture plane. I'm going to pull them down onto that horizon line. So first is vanishing point right. And I move that point down. I'll just draw it so that you see it. And then my measuring point right. Same thing. Measuring point left. And then lastly, vanishing point right. Left. My other left. Okay. So now I have all those points on my um, horizon point, right? The last thing I'm going to do from the plan, the last information I'm going to take from the plan is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go right to the inside corner or any point at which the picture plane intersects the building, the wall of the building, okay? In this case, for all of you, it'll be the same, the inside corner. And I'm going to pull that all the way down to this ground line, okay? So it's important that I get it down to that arbitrary ground line that I established. I go to the other side and I do exactly the same thing. I come down here on the ground line. So now I have the two inside corners along the picture plane running on the ground, right? So what do we know about the picture plane? We know that anything on that picture plane we can measure to the scale of the drawing. And in this case, we're doing 3 eighths of an inch is the scale of our drawing. So the first thing I'll do now is from those points, I'll go ahead and construct baselines that run through those corner points to the vanishing points at either side. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go from this point, this vanishing point, through that point for my plan. And that'll be one baseline. I'll go in the other direction. Do the same thing. That'll be another baseline. Okay. Now, before you go further, what you should do is you should just sort of check whether that where those, those points intersect to make sure that they're actually accurate. Um, because when you're drawing in perspective or drawing in anything, just moving your, your uh, ruler, you know, a sixteenth of an inch over a distance, it could actually affect the accuracy and the location of that point. The way I'm going to do it is since I know that this wall of my space is supposed to be 28 feet, and this wall of my space is supposed to be 28 feet, if I measure from either of these corners along my picture plane 28 feet, and I go to these measuring points, it should give me an intersection right at that corner. So, at a scale of 3 eighths of an inch to the foot, I'm going to put zero right on that point. I'm going to go out here to 28 feet, make a little mark, and from that point to that measuring point, if I pull the line down there, you see it's off like a sixteenth to thirty-second of an inch. It's off just a little bit. But it's a good check. If I go back in the other direction, same thing, 28 feet. And I do the same thing to the other measuring point, the measuring point right. So it's about the same. Okay? So it's a little bit off. That's not enough to worry about. If you have something really radical, fix it, okay, before you go much further. Um, all right, so these are my major baselines on the ground plane. Now I know that I've got depth in my space, 
So now what I'll do is from those same points, which represent these corner points, I'm going to construct the base lines that make the base of those two walls. All right? The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go from this corner to the vanishing point opposite, and I'm going to draw a line. And I'll go from this point to the vanishing point opposite, and I'm going to draw a line. And where those two lines intersect, that's going to give me this point back here in space. Okay? Clear? As mud? Okay. Next. So I've got the ground plane now. So now I need to get the ceiling plane, and then I can begin to look at my walls. So what I do know is I know that this space inside here from floor to ceiling is 20 feet vertically, right? So I know that since I pull that line down, that line represents a vertical line on my picture plane, right, that I can measure on that line. So I'm going to measure up 20 feet. There's 20 feet. And I'm going to take that mark and just transfer it to the other vertical line that I pulled down from the corner of my space. And then from those two lines, I'll do the same thing. I'll basically construct the lines at the ceiling. So now you can see what happens when I lower my horizon line to whatever it was, nine feet? Six. Was it six? Mm -hmm. Six feet. And I got something's off here. So it looks kind of exaggerated emphasis on the ceiling, right? But we knew that would happen. Okay, I need to fix that. I'm not sure what happened there. I might have pulled the line down wrong, but. So this is looking up at the ceiling. This is the shape of the ceiling in perspective, okay? So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of ceiling and I'm seeing foreshortening on the floor plane, okay? All right, so what's next? So now we're gonna go ahead and construct the grid. Now constructing the grid is something that you can do as a visual aid when you're laying out your perspective. If I was gonna do this as a freehand, I might actually construct the grid and then come back and put trace over it and just freehand sort of sketch in my perspective. I would still use the measuring devices, but the grid gives me at least some sense of